Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In 2023, we covered a lot of light guns. We covered the gun for IR, we covered the Sinden, and we covered the Retro Shooter. That one was brand new, and it was the first real plug-and-play option. However, it came with a really underpowered system, so unfortunately it didn't fully unlock the capabilities of the Retro Shooter gun. And now, fast forward six to eight months later, they actually have a new version of the gun, which got even better, but unfortunately you're not really gonna be able to fully unlock those capabilities with the standalone PC sort of thing it comes with. It's not really a PC, but it's sort of a Pandora's box type thing. What we're gonna talk about today is the software options for these guns. We haven't really talked about that. And there are these pre-configured builds out there that kind of help you get started faster. Now, some of these or most of them claim to be plug and play. This one is the Chris Cool Mod two terabyte version called the Retro Beast. It's pretty good, I've been playing with it. It's not truly plug and play, but he really does simplify a lot of the processes and he poured his heart and soul into this thing to give you some features that make setting up your guns a lot more simple than it would be if you were to do it yourself. And that's actually the reason why a lot of people don't tackle this. Light gun configuration for all these different emulators can be very, very difficult and time consuming. And then not to mention all these new plugins like Mame Hooker, which send feedback to your gun to do certain things. It can get really confusing. So having people out there that do the work for you is pretty valuable. Although I really do like trying to learn things myself too. But when it comes to all these light gun games, it can be really complex, like I said. So we're gonna check out this drive, see if it really does deliver on what they claim this is supposed to be. And if this is something you should potentially invest your money in. So let's check it out. Okay, so I know the first question you guys are gonna ask. What games are on this build? I know that's the question you're gonna ask. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the games first. We're gonna do the fun stuff first. Then I'm gonna show you some of the configuration options that Chris developed to make your light gun setup really easy. But before I do that, I do wanna mention, this build supports technically three different light guns. It supports the Gun for IR, it supports the Retro Shooter, and it's gonna support the upcoming Blamcon gun. I did a quick video on that, so just know this image is going to support all three of those. It doesn't currently support the Sinden. All right, so let's just get started. You get this really cool splash screen when you join, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna lower the volume just a little bit here. You're gonna notice that the build actually has MAME games on it too. So you could technically use this build for a, a complete arcade setup if you wanted, but we're not really gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus primarily on the uh, light gun game. So I'm just gonna skip right to uh, where it says light guns. So we're gonna go in here, and in here you're gonna see the light gun selection is separated by platform. So the first one you're gonna see is Xbox. Now Xbox, you're gonna see Silent Scope, Dark Silhouette, which is Silent Scope 2, Silent Scope 3, and then Virtuacop 3. If you've never played Virtuacop 3, it's actually pretty awesome. I didn't discover that till a bit later. Then you're gonna go into Wii. So the Wii platform's gonna have a bunch of the Wii games. I'm just gonna scroll through the wheel. I'm not gonna show you every single one, uh, but it's got some notables like House of the Dead Overkill. That's actually a quite naughty version of uh, House of the Dead. I did not know this and I was in a live stream once and he's like, M or F? I was like, okay, cool. Uh, this is a family-friendly channel for the most part, so we're gonna have to edit that out, but it, it happened live, so you know how that goes. So you can see there's a bunch of different games. Uh, the Wii actually had quite a few good games when it came to the light gun genre, so hopefully that gives you a good taste. We're gonna skip Techno Parrot for the last, because that's actually got some really exciting one. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know what this is actually. So I think this is a uh, Super Nintendo. So this would be like your Super Scope stuff. So there was ports of uh, Revolution X and uh, a bunch of different things. So I know a lot of you guys probably care a little bit less about the console versions and you're more into the MAME versions of the games and we'll get to those in a second. Uh, I not, oh, actually this is cool. I forgot about these. So I had one of these Action Max things back in the day. I don't know if I asked for it for Christmas or whatever, but this was actually a VHS tape that you'd put into your um, your VCR, some of these, it's a mix. So it's a mix between that and American Laser Games games. But uh, I totally remember this. And I don't remember, I get, I'm probably getting them confused. There was Action Max and one other one. I think this is the one you put in your VHS and then you'd have like a gun you'd shoot with. I, correct me if I'm wrong if you guys are watching, but I'm pretty sure that's how I remember it. So anyways, there's a bunch of these in here too. 
Uh, there's some fun ones like Drug Wars, Mad Dog McCree, Who Shot Johnny Rock. There's some there's some really good ones in here. Space Pirates, very campy, kind of goofy video stuff, but but pretty fun. Sega CD had some good light gun games. We'll go into Sega CD here for a second. Uh, these were kind of grainy at the time because, you know, it was when FMV st started really taking off. Uh, so some of these are kind of goofy, but, um, you know, Cannibal Corpse was one, or not Cannibal Corpse, <laughs> Cannibal Corpse, it's a band, Corpse Killer, <laughs> Corpse Killer is in here, and uh, that's a fun one, that actually had a 32X version as well, but anyways, you can kind of get an idea of the ones that are in here, but Sega CD is a little less interesting to me, you get to PS3, there's a lot of really cool ones, you've got Dead Storm Pirates, Time Crisis, Blade, uh, you got, I forget what it is, is it, is it uh, I don't know, I just oh, Rate, Raising Storm? Okay, I don't know if I've ever really played that version of Time Crisis, but that looks pretty cool. You got Time Crisis 4. Uh, Dead Storm Pirates, I actually have played before at Captain's Auctions. They had one that they were selling when I went to Captain's Auctions to film Chasing Nostalgia. That was pretty cool. So we're going to back out of this and go, oh shoot, I pressed play by accident. Okay, moving along to PS2. You've got a lot of great light gun games as part of PS2, so I'm just going to scroll through some of these really quick so you can get an idea of the ones that are on here. Time Crisis, Crisis Zone, Time Crisis 3, Time Crisis 2. So you can, can imagine the PS2 versions of these games were pretty good. So you're going to see all of those in here. Now we jump up, back out of here. They have PlayStation. I'm not going to focus as much time on PlayStation, but there were ports of various arcade games like Area 51, the original Time Crisis, which uh, I'm a little underwhelmed by the PlayStation version of Time Crisis, although in the time, it actually probably seemed pretty good, but uh, I would rather play the arcade version, which is obviously on here. You've got some NES games. So there's some, uh, well, Wild Gunman is interesting because Wild Gunman was not released in the arcade. It was in Back to the Future, but it was not an actual arcade game. It was only a NES game, I believe. Uh, I don't know why Track and Field are in there. Maybe you can play those with the gun somehow. I'm not really sure. But uh, Operation Wolf, uh, you know, you can kind of go through these. I'm, I'm a little less uh, excited about the NES game, so we'll, we'll jump out of that. You've got some Naomi games. Confidential Mission was one that's popular. A lot of people remember that. Typing of the Dead is in here. Ninja Assault. Uh, there's a couple other ones too. We'll jump out of there and we'll go to MS-DOS. In MS-DOS, you're going to find two games I am unfamiliar with, but they're in here. So uh, if you knew this game, AD Cop, I did not, but it is uh, it is on here. You can see now you start getting into the Sega stuff, the Sega Model 3. You've got LA, LA Machine Guns, The Lost World by Jurassic Park. That's a very popular one that a lot of people like. Um, if you go to an, an, an old school retro arcade, a lot of times this game is still popular to this day just because the Jurassic Park franchise is such a... A uh, hot item even after all these years. Star Wars Trilogy actually plays fairly well with a light gun, believe it or not, so it is kind of fun. Uh, and, and of course, we already covered LA Machine Guns. That's a great one. You go to Sega Model 2. This is where I get excited because you have the original Virtua Cop and Virtua Cop 2, both awesome games, and they look great on here. You've got House of the Dead, the original one, which is great. You've got Gunblade, Behind Enemy Lines, some great games here. Then you go into the Sega Master System. Uh, I'm not that excited about this. So I'm just not going to spend much time, but I'll just scroll through them really quick so you can kind of see what's here. But I'll move along. Uh, this is one platform that had this game that uh, I played for the first time at Galloping Ghost. Although my buddy Nick said he grew up playing this or, or had an arcade that, that had this. It's kind of a cool concept. It's really fun. You're kind of a firefighter putting out fires. Uh, it, it works really well with the light gun. In the actual arcade game, you had something that kind of looked like a fire hose, but that's the only game under that platform. Sega Genesis had some actual light gun games as well. The, there was a port of T2. I remember thinking this looked exactly like the arcade. It, it doesn't, but uh, you know, you've know, you got some grainy versions of uh, Lethal Enforcers. Uh, but yeah, you, if you remember playing any of these games on Sega Genesis, you can go back and enjoy those. Dreamcast obviously had one of the best ports of House of the Dead 2. It was almost one for one. Um, there's a bunch of other games in here too. There's Virtua Cop 2. I think there's Confidential Mission again because, you know, Naomi and, uh, and uh, Dreamcast. So we'll skip through that. Then you have a Thomas Wave. This is where you get Sega Clay Challenge. There's Extreme Hunting, Extreme Hunting 2. Sports Shooting USA is one that if... Um, Depending on where you were, there was actually quite a few of these out in the wild. I see them every now and then um, for sale on at various auctions and stuff like that. 
Actually, the funny thing is Thomas Weave had one of the first cabinets that had uh, sort of a mod, not first, but it was more a modern cabinet with modular control panels that had racing, shooting, and fighting, which was really cool. So, uh, or, or like gen generic controls. Then you've got the uh, Atari XE. I don't, I don't even know what this is. Like, I don't even think I've ever seen that before. So that's cool. Uh, then you've got MAME light gun games. So this is all of your MAME stuff. So you got like Area 51, Area 51 Maximum Force. I'm just calling out the ones that I think people are, are, are that are memorable to people. Uh, Carnival, that's a great one. A lot of people love that. Cheyenne Chiller. Chillers are weird as hell, but uh, kind of a cult classic for some reason. It's very strange though. Crossbow. You know, you got them all in here. Duck Hunt. I'm just kind of jumping through some of the ones that aren't as sort of popular here. Hogan's Alley is a good one. Invasion Abductors is awesome. It's a midway shooter that has a really cool light gun. I've always wanted to pick up this cabinet, but uh, never really got around to finding one. Uh, Judge Dredd, it's got the Jurassic Park. The one, this is the other Jurassic Park. Everyone probably remembers this one. You got Lethal Enforcers, Lethal Enforcers 2. Laser Ghost, which Laser Ghost is a very unique game. I played that at uh, Galloping Ghost. You have sort of that that thing you look through, it's like a mirror. Uh, this game still plays well without it. Uh, Lucky and Wild, that would be fun to play on here. There's there's a bunch. I mean, it goes on and on. Operation Wolf, Operation Thunderbolt, Point Blank 1 and 2, Revolution X, you got T2 on here, Steel Gunners, both of them. I mean, you really, really every main game you could possibly want. The original Time Crisis, which is awesome. So yeah, tons and tons of main games. We could be here all day scrolling through this but lots to choose from. So you can't really get bored when you're looking at uh, a build like this. And if you look, there's actually in the upper left-hand corner of every single one of these collections, it does show you how many games are in that collection, which is kind of helpful. Now, I'm gonna go to Techno Parrot because I think that's what gets people super excited. These are more modern light gun shooters. Uh, Transformers, a really fun game. Terminator Salvation, a great one. Target Terror Gold, that's a fun one as well. S Star Trek Voyager. Silent Hill, uh, I'm not familiar with that one. Rambo, Rambo is really fun. You have this like rage mode where Rambo goes crazy. It's a cool Sega game. I don't think I've ever played this, this game before. Uh, Police Trainer 2, Operation Ghost. You've got Luigi's Mansion, Lost Island Adventure. So there's like a ton. L Lethal Enforcers 3, Jurassic Park Arcade, the newer one. There's House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn, one of my personal favorites. I love, love this game. Uh, House of the Dead DX, I don't know what that is. I don't know this. I don't think I've ever played that. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Uh, House of the Dead 4 Special, House of the Dead 4, Haunted Mansion. Like, it goes on, man. It goes on and on and on. Friction is like a fan favorite of mine, and it's one that a lot of people didn't know about. Friction was a kit game to replace old Time Crisis games. I think the publisher only made really one game, but it's pretty cool. Far Cry Paradise Lost is another fun one. Elevator Action Invasions, a, a pretty cool one as well. This is cool. The only time I've ever seen Castlevania Arcade was actually at Galloping Ghost, and you have like sort of these uh, whip. It's a whip, but the whip thing you hold almost looks like a... Uh, I don't remember. What do you call the PS thingies with the balls on top? I can't remember what those are called, but they look like those. Uh, but they're they're they look like whips. Anyways, you got aliens, aliens, Armageddon. Extermination is a fun one, by the way. If you've never played it, it's one of my favorites. Armageddon is very very fun as well. So you can see there is a very awesome curated list. Now keep in mind with the Patreon stuff for Techno Parrot, uh, some of these games you do have to have a Patreon license to actually play them. Uh, but you you can figure that out yourself. But yeah, you'll you'll need a license on some of these games. So that's kind of. The games in a nutshell, you can see it's pretty awesome and it's jam-packed. And like I said, there's actually a bunch of other systems on here as well where you have MAME and you have regular Techno Parrot games and stuff like that too. Now, before we kind of do some gameplay, I did want to show you some of these gun applications. This makes configuration super freaking simple. So if you have a retro shooter, you go to retro shooter. This, this is step one. So after you do all the preload of all the software, there's a bunch of software you have to have uh, loaded on your machine to support these games. You do that first. Then after all of that is done, you can go in here and finally start setting up your games or, or your guns. So if you have a retro shooter, you put it in here, it will launch the GUI to configure the rep retro shooter. Now, if you have a retro shooter, then your second step would be to go to set up Demol shooter. So it's step one, step two, 
And then step three is to set up your gun for techno parrot. So once you have it, once you go step one, step two, step three, you're done and can start playing games. Now, the cool thing about this techno parrot step is you press uh, sort of, if I'm using your controller, you'd press A, but uh, you would press A on this and then it will go and configure every single game in the techno parrot uh, emulator. So that's actually a pain in the ass because you have to set up them, them up individually. So Chris did something really cool here. So if you're unfamiliar with this or have never configured techno parrot before, you maybe won't have an appreciation for this, but I'm telling you right now, this is really cool what he did. So basically, again, repeat, retro shooter, you go here, it calibrates your guns, then you set up the mall shooter, then you go to Techno Parrot and it sets up all your guns. Now, if you have Gun for IR, which is the other gun this supports, you're gonna go to Gun for IR. Oh, look at this familiar face. So Chris put me on the on the user interface, which is really cool. But this is the thumbnail for one of my Gun for IR videos. I was pretty stoked when I saw this. I was like, I was in the white, but my uh, my kitchen with my wife, and I was like, uh, I'm in the user interface. She's like, No way, that's so cool. So, anyways. So this process would be slightly different here for Gun for IR. You're gonna go step one, Gun for IR. You're obviously not gonna do Retro Shooter. Then you're gonna go to Demol Shooter. Then you're gonna go to Techno Parrot. Now keep in mind, this isn't a full tutorial on how to use this, but I just wanna let you know that is the step that you'd go through. I will show you, I'll break out of here and show you some minor basic configuration stuff, but for the most part, that's not what this video is about. It's more about showcasing the build for you. So that's kind of it. There's some things in here to enable light, uh, enable crosshairs and enable a cursor if you like stuff like that. So really cool that he added all these features to just make it simple for you. Okay, here's a quick closer look at the setup process. I'm only gonna do it for Retro Shooter. So you click on Retro Shooter. I have my TV right over here. And as soon as that happens, like I said, it's gonna launch you right into the configuration tool. So give it just a second here, and there we go. It's gonna ask you to place the sensors. We already did that. I'm gonna shoot at the screen right here. So now we're gonna set it up. I'm gonna hit the button for 16.9 screen, and then we're gonna, we're gonna calibrate it right here live. Okay. Now the calibration is complete. We're gonna hit escape to escape out of this. Then we're gonna go down to Demol Shooter. So we're gonna go down here. This is just so you can see it as a closer up way, just cause it's a little tough to see in the video. So we just figured this would be helpful for everybody. So at this point, you can configure both player one and player two. So we're just gonna say player one, and this is the gun we just plugged in. So it should be the first one on the list, but to validate, it will say the device name. So it says Retro Shooter One. Now to make sure that's the right gun, you point it at the screen and if you can see, there's movement, that's the right gun. So we're gonna say, all right, cool. We're gonna save that for you here. Then the last thing you really do, the only thing you have to do after you exit this out is go to Techno Parrot. Like I said, you hit enter here. It kind of looks like it locks up the GUI and then all of a sudden it will release the user interface again. Now it's complete. So that's just a closer look at the process. The process is relatively the same. If you choose Gun for IR, except instead of loading the retro shooter front end for configuration tool, it's gonna load the gun for IR configuration tool. And that's kind of it, it's that simple. I just wanted to give you a closer look at it so you could see it um, instead of being from afar in the room with me, hopefully this gives you a better perspective of how you set that up. Now, at this point, we are ready to play. So let's go in the other room and check this build out. Okay, so we're ready for some testing. I'm downstairs in front of the Extreme Gaming Cabinets cab. I actually put Chris Cool Mod's two terabyte build on this cabinet. So I'm no longer using at the moment the Integrum Retro build, which by the way is another great build that we will be checking out soon on the channel with some pretty unique capabilities. But for today, we're talking about Chris Cool Mod's build. So I put it on here temporarily so I could show you guys what it's all about. We're gonna start with the Retro Shooter gun. So I'm gonna go into the interface like I showed you guys now, the one thing that I showed you was the setup. So for the setup, you're gonna go to the gun apps folder. So this is if you've already done the prerequisite stuff. So you've already installed all the drivers and stuff. So at this point, you're ready to configure your gun. It's super simple. You're gonna go to the retro shooter setup. Once this launches, it's gonna go seamlessly into the retro shooter user interface. 
you're gonna hit uh, the corresponding button on the gun and now it's gonna do your calibration. So we're gonna calibrate the gun really quick. Now keep in mind, I'm using the newer 4IR retro shooter. So there's actually four IR sensors. So it's definitely a lot more accurate. And when you're using a PC, I do notice the tracking on the retro shooter guns is way better. So at this point, we've configured our gun. So we can press escape here. Now it's gonna bring us right back into the user interface. So that was step one. Step two is gonna be, it's all in order to set up Demol Shooter. When we set up Demol Shooter, we're identifying what player one gun is and what player two gun is, okay? So we're gonna to go to this drop down menu here and we're gonna select player one configuration because I only have one gun connected. Now you're gonna see these funky device IDs. The device ID is like a hardware identifier for the gun. You might have to click through the list because once you click on one, it's gonna show you the name of that device. And then I can, okay, so now I know that that is actually the device ID for the gun. So I'm good, I'm gonna save this configuration. So now that configuration is saved. I'm gonna exit out this box I'm back to the user interface. There's only one more step and then we can start shooting things. We're gonna to go to Techno Parrot, set that up, press enter. It's not, it doesn't give you a prompt. I'm gonna actually ask Chris if he could change that. It just brings you right back to the interface. So when I hit enter, what it did is it went and configured all of the games under the Techno Parrot emulator. That's a pain in the ass. And he did it just easy for you. So at this point, we should be ready to go. So all I'm gonna do from here is press back on the interface. Okay, now I'm ready to play some guns. Let's start with a Techno Parrot game. So we'll go to Light Guns. The, gu the buttons on this interface actually work on the cabinet too. So I'm gonna go Techno Parrot. And then we'll play, first we'll play Transformers. The one interesting thing while this loads up on Transformers, this gun has a auto shoot and a single shot recoil. To change that, you actually press and hold this button on the side. For Transformers, because it's a game where it's rapid fire, it works better when the gun is in like a constant recoil. So right now, if you notice when I shoot, it's just a single shot. If I press and hold this for three seconds, that's gonna be the recoil option I'm gonna want for the retro shooter for Transformers in order to get the full effect of the game. All right, it's just initializing real quick and once that's done, we're gonna play some Transformers with the retro shooter with Chris Coolmon's two terabyte build and you're gonna see how easy this was to start shooting in Techno Parrot pretty quickly because man, if I did this myself, we'd be here for a long time and this would be like a two hour video versus, I don't know, however long this is gonna be. Okay, you can see my gun is tracking, no problem. Let's do this. All right. So for games like this, this kind of recoil is perfect. This is exactly what we want. <laughs> but you know, the retro shooter gets a lot of crap for its recoil sounding kind of, uh, I don't know, springy, but I don't mind it actually. And for a budget light gun, it's pretty damn good on the PC, man. I gotta say. Oh shoot, hold on. I love it. This game is badass, man. If you've never played it, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so you can see the retro shooter is working seamlessly, no problem. Chris's tool auto-configured everything. So I'm gonna exit out of this game really quick. Okay, now we're back to the main menu. That was Retro Shooter. I'm gonna just do one more game and then I'm gonna show you what it would be like if I was using Gun for IR. So let's pick one more game and then we'll dive into the Gun for IR side. I think for the next game, I'm gonna pick one of my favorites, which is House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. Some of the games under Techno Parrot require you to have a Patreon for the Techno Parrot group. So just know that going in. That's not anything that Chris Coolmod controls, that's the Techno Parrot team. So they require some money, you'll get, you'll pay the money and you'll you'll gain access to some of the games they put behind a paywall. Now for Scarlet Dawn, I'm also going to keep the auto fire like that because Scarlet Dawn you're using machine guns and Gatling guns and guns like that, so that kind of a recoil makes sense. It's not really a single shot kind of a game. Okay, let's go. If you've never played House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn, you have ancillary weapons you can choose. 
So that's what you get to do here in the beginning. The game is super cool, man. It's one of my favorite of the House of the Dead. So I can say machine gun, Gatling gun, and we're off and running. So to change your weapon of choice, there's a button you can press on the retro shooter that's automatically mapped to do that. All right, let's uh, wait till this loads here and then we'll get started. Kick some ass. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. So you can see you press this, uh, this button right here on the right and that'll change your weapon. So if I want to use my Gatling gun, which is pretty badass by the way, and then I got my Gatling gun. Anyways, it's so loud. That's the only thing about the retro shooter is the gun is so loud, it overpowers the music sometimes. So you'll see when I switch back to the standard gun for IR build, the gun con, that it, it actually is much more subtle. It's, it's kind of a little, it depends on what you want. If you want to go like beast mode and have loud recoil, then, then these are actually kind of cool. But if you want just something more subtle, I think the gun cons that uh, Raymond sells uh, are a little more subtle. So anyways, we're going to exit out of this. We're going to switch over to a gun. So I want to show you how seamless this is. We're going to remove this gun. So at this point we have no gun, no uh, retro shooter. So I'm gonna stick on a gun for IR gun. So here's the gun for IR gun. I wanna show you that you can use both guns with this build and it will seamlessly go from one to the other. And that's what's so cool about his configuration tool. So we're gonna plug this in. This is a 12 volt solenoid. So we're gonna go our 12 volt force feedback. I'm gonna plug that in. Now at this point, we're gonna go back to that tools menu. Then you're gonna go to gun apps. Now I'm gonna reset this up for gun for IR. So you're gonna go to step one, gun for IR. You get to see my beautiful face here. Then you hit enter here. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up the gun for IR configuration tool. You can see um, we're gonna say start calibration. So make sure when you start calibration, I'm not gonna be able to calibrate it because I still have the retro shooter LEDs connected. So I'm gonna disconnect the retro shooter LEDs and then I have the gun for IR LEDs uh, covered with tape right now so that um, so they're not interfering with the retro shooter one. So I'm just gonna quickly remove the, the tape and shut off the other ones and then we should be good to go. And then we're gonna remove the IR sensors for retro shooter and now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna actually escape out of this and start over again. So we're gonna say, Start calibration. Yes, I'm sure. Let's start this real quick. One, two, three, four, five. At this point, the gun is calibrated and ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Demol Shooter as step two. I'm gonna press enter there. Now it's gonna say, what's my player one configuration? So obviously it's not retro shooter anymore. So I'm gonna look at this drop down, and then you test the gun, make sure that's the proper one. Okay, it's working. Make sure when you select a device, you just test the gun and make sure that's the one that's actually functional as player one and player two. For this purpose, I'm just gonna do player one and then I'm gonna hit save config. At this point, the only thing I need to do is let Techno Parrot know that I made this change. So to do that, you go to step three. Like I said, step three doesn't give you a prompt back. You'll see it will like briefly pause and then it will go back to the user interface and the music will start playing again. That means it did what it was supposed to do. If I had any feedback for Chris Coolmod, I'd say it would be cool if at that point it said Techno Parrot configuration complete. But uh, if he doesn't put that in there, just know that when you hit enter on that, you wait for the prompt back. And then once your GUI starts functioning again, it's completed. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back. I'm gonna show you a game with this gun. I think what we're gonna do for this is we're, let's do like a game that's pretty common, a MAME game. We'll do Terminator. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the issue I had. Uh, there was a power issue with the actual power connectors on the front of the Extreme Gaming Cabinets, but I fixed it. So now the recoil is back working on the gun and we're good to go. That had nothing to do with the Chris Cool Mod thing. That had to do with the cabinet I'm using. So we're gonna start this off and you're gonna see the recoil is dramatically less on this than the retro shooter, but it's actually kind of more controlled and I think a better experience all, to, all around. So in this game, I gotta put my coins in and let's go. You'll see your, uh, your missile is your side button right here, or rocket. I guess I always called it a missile. I guess it's more of a rocket than a missile, but, or a grenade almost. But you can hear like the feedback of this gun is just a little bit more subtle than the retro shooter. I like, I like gun for IR better 
But Retro Shooter's not bad for a budget option, especially this new one where it has the four sensors. It's not bad. Um, it definitely much improved. And if you just wanted a general purpose light gun shooter cab, it, Retro Shooter isn't a great, isn't a bad, it actually isn't a bad starting point. But the whole purpose of me showing you the difference between plugging in gun for IR and plugging in Retro Shooter is that this configuration supports both. And then it's also going to support the upcoming Blamcon guns. But what is so cool about it though is that it just gives you options. You could get this build, start with the Retro Shooter guns, and then go over to gun for ir seamlessly between the two. So kind of a cool setup. I really like it. Uh, keep in mind I have multiple sensors hooked up to this because I'm testing both for you for this purposes of the video. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. But anyways, we're going to go and show you a couple more games. I'm gonna switch out for one more gun for IR gun that I think you guys will think is really cool and then we'll wrap this video up with some final thoughts. Okay, so I just busted out the Terminator Salvation Gun. I figured that'd be a great way to end the video. So this gun is the Terminator Salvation and Alien Extermination. Is it Extermin Extermination? Alien Armageddon? I can't remember, whatever one. But this actually has, uh, it, it was for both in the arcade, but this is a gun for IR modified gun. So anyways, you can use any gun for IR gun you want. It's just, if you're gonna do a video, you might as well bring out the cool ones, right? So on this, uh, the reload is mapped to the bottom, just like the arcade. It has some LEDs here when you shoot, you can see it kind of lights up. You can kind of see that right there. But let's, uh, you can skip this by hitting the reload. All right, let's do it. One of my favorites, actually. This is a really fun game. If you're a big Terminator fan, you, you can't really go wrong playing this. So if you find this in the arcade or whatever, definitely go check it out if you've never played it before. All right, here we go. You can get weapon power-ups with grenades and all sorts of things during the game, but I'm just gonna show you briefly. So there's a shotgun. The recoil on this gun isn't crazy hard, so it's not like real distracting or anything, but, but it's nice when you're holding it in your hand to get a little bit of that, that feedback. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh shoot, I wasn't paying attention, oops. All right, I think there's another gun upgrade somewhere over here. There's a grenade, and there's, ah, shoot, I missed the Gatling gun. Oh, wait, I got it. This is my favorite gun, because <laughs> obviously you can blast them, and you got your grenades too. Definitely very cool. <laughs> Who doesn't love this? All right. Anyways, I'm gonna cancel out of this really quick. Okay, before I get into final thoughts, and if you made it this far, this is really critical information that you need to have a good experience with the drive. Now he documents this, but people don't tend to read, so I just wanna make sure you avoid this problem altogether. So I'm gonna give you one quick last tip before we wrap up and do final thoughts. Okay, one other quick tip I wanted to show you guys is when you plug in this drive, this drive is gonna expect to see certain partitions as certain drive letters. So it is imperative that you do this. It is in the setup steps, but if you don't do it, the build will not work. So I'm just gonna show you how to do this really quick because if you don't do this, you're gonna run into issues and you're gonna be you're gonna be kind of like beating your head against the wall going, what the heck am I doing wrong? It's really simple. You just go to uh, the partition tool within Windows and you need to make sure that the larger of the two partitions is set as drive D. So if it's not, go to change drive letters and change that here to drive D. It has to be drive D. Then the smaller of the two partitions needs to be the R drive. So right click on that, change drive letter and path and make sure it's the R drive. Now the only issue I had was with one of the PCs I was setting this up on, my DVD-ROM drive, yeah, it was one of those old PCs that still had those in it. It was set and fixed as D. The only way I could get around that, keep in mind, someone that's a really hardcore PC person could probably figure this out in two seconds. I just unplugged the D drive, rebooted the machine, and then it it released drive letter D because I don't use that drive anyway. So just if you run into that issue, you're using like an older Dell PC or an HP PC or something like that for your light gun build, just kind of keep that in mind. The only other thing I'll say is when you're doing the install, there's a folder that has a bunch of the prerequisite things that you need to install. 
you got to go through and do those. Otherwise, it won't have all the required software to run the games. So you're going to want to go to, if I could open this up, of course. Why? So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to, my mouse isn't working again. Seriously? So there's a tools folder in here that I'm not going to be able to find because I'm actually looking for it right now. Oh, it's under the wiki. So you go to wiki plus and then you see there's this windows uh, one click install. So you go to that and there's a thing that says retro beast install one click process. If you do this, it isn't. Oh, I know why. Cause I got the gun down here. The gun, the gun also acts, acts as a mouse. So that's why, sorry. <laughs> that's my own phone. Look what the heck's going on. I'm sitting here pulling the trigger <laughs> underneath the table and like, it's right clicking on stuff. This thing. Anyway, so what you got to do is you go to this one click process. It is not unattended though. So you do need to uh, kind of babysit it. But once you do that, so you set your drive letters, you do this part. Then after that, you launch the, the actual um, user interface. So those are the steps. Step one, set your drive letters. Step two, install the one click install stuff, which installs all of the software you need. It also, keep in mind, puts the build in your startup, so it will start it up all the way next time you you uh, launch it. But uh, if you don't want that, you can just take that out of your startup. And the other thing I'll say is once you, it, it seems confusing, but basically you go to the D drive. If you're gonna open up the software manually, you go to Retro Beast Coin Ops, and then there's just simply an executable that's called uh, Retro Beast. You double click on that, at that point, it launches the light gun build and you're good to go. That's pretty much it. So I'm sorry that I I couldn't do that in a more simple manner, but that's what that's what it is. And, and here's the light gun build now. So that's it's as simple as that. Uh, and hopefully I didn't make it confusing, but that's that's basically what you got to do. The Chris Cool Mod light gun drive is really good. The things you have to make sure you do beforehand is there's going to be some driver installations you need to do. He has a batch file in there that allows you to install all of those drivers and all of the required software. Uh, and it actually even adds the light gun build to your startup. So the next time after you load all those things and reboot, it's going to open directly up into his Retro Beast two terabyte build, which I think is really cool and convenient. The other thing to just note is that once that's done, then at that point, you still have to do step one, two, and three in the user interface, and you're gonna wanna select the gun you have as step one. If you have a gun for IR, you use the gun for IR step one. If you have a retro shooter, you use the retro shooter step one. The only issue I ran into with the calibration is if you choose gun for IR and you go into the calibration tool, sometimes it looks like it goes back to the GUI and it locks up. It's not actually locked up. Gun for IR sometimes gets stuck behind that window. So you'll have to use alt tab on a keyboard. It's always good with these light gun builds to have a keyboard around. Uh, like I said, these aren't all, all seamless plug and play. I have a buck on a reloaded cabinet right here. Like this thing every time flawlessly works. You will have quirks here and there, but for the most part, if you build one of these yourself anyway, you're gonna run into a lot more quirks than you will if you went with something like his build, which is all kind of pre-configured. I think Chris will do some level of support on this too. So if you're having problems, he will remote into your machine and try to help you out with those things. Uh, he's not gonna like do everything for you, but for the most part, he does a really good job supporting the build. As a matter of fact, I had some questions and instead of answering them, he's just like, let me log in and I'll show you. So the next time you do it, you'll have no problem doing it. The build itself is pretty good, but just keep in mind, right? If you're gonna dive into this world, this is all open source software, right? So it's all software that's out there that he went and pieced it all together. And then also, you know, put a nice front end on it. He is using CoinOps as the front end for this. So if you're a fan of CoinOps, uh, all of it is gonna look very nice and familiar. The user interface is very, very pretty. But I think overall for the fact that he's helping you out by eliminating all of the, the legwork you'd have to do. For the couple of quirks, I think it is worth it. Now the next light gun build we're gonna look at on the channel is from Integrum Retro. It's the one that the Extreme Gaming Cabinets came with, and we're also gonna take a look at the new retro shooter light gun. So we're just gonna continue on this light gun path and showing you more of the software offerings and why you'd maybe choose one over the other. But I gotta, I gotta say, I'll give a, a thumbs up to Chris. He did a really good job and I love some of the things that he's done with like the, 
uh, the step one, two, three that simplifies it. Demol Shooter, if you've ever played with it and you try to configure that with Techno Parrot, it can all kind of be a little overwhelming. You have to go in and do each individual game and his script goes and does that all for you. So it's all ready to go after you do that. So you should be up and running really quickly if you choose this light gun drive. But like I said, I don't want to be a broken record. You know, go into it with the expectation that you will have to tinker a little bit. All of these solutions you're going to have to tinker a little bit, no matter whose light gun build it is. It's impossible to make this completely 100% unattended. Uh, maybe one day, but for now, most of these builds still require a little bit of know-how and knowledge every now and then when you run into a quirk here or there. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I really did. Thank you to Chris Coolmod for providing it. I will have a link in the description so you can check this light gun drive out if you want to buy it yourself. He also has a bunch of other things. We didn't even scratch the surface of the gun build because he actually has MAME games in there too uh, and, and other arcade games. So in effect, if you were looking to build a multi-cade that was uh, revolving around guns, uh, you could definitely use a build like this, and there's a lot of great software in there for you. So, hey, that's another option as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Put your comments below. What do you think about this? And that's it for now, guys. We will see you on the next one.